Hello everyone, hope you're doing great. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Really pleasure to teach you again. It's really humbling to see the students take so much interest in my classes. So uh, some of you would be knowing me by now and of course some of you would be new to the channel. So for all the students who are watching this video, I'm Sonam and I'm here to teach you English, rather CBSE English for class 12. My course will give you complete and appropriate coverage of reading, writing and literature section of class 12 CBSC English. So uh, today is the second lecture of the first chapter of Flamingo Reader. The name of the chapter is The Last Lesson written by Alphonse Dode. And this is part two and the final part of the theory of the chapter. Again, I would like to repeat the name of the chapter, The Last Lesson. So in our last class, uh, I would just like to narrate you in a few lines where exactly we finished. So finally, after lots of diversions and distractions on our protagonist, the name of the protagonist is Franz. And yes, Franz is the one who's telling us the story. So in our last class, after many distractions on Franz's way to school, Franz finally reaches his school and settles down on his seat. Now, the thing that he was really scared of was uh, that M. Hamel would be asking him the rule for participles. And exactly that is what happened. M. Hamel asked him, made him stand up and asked him the rule for participles. And as we all know by now, Franz did not know anything about the participles. He did not know the ABC of participles. So he could not give any answer. He just stood there with his head held downwards. Then finally, M. Hamel did not scold him on not being able to answer the question. In fact, M. Hamel told him that, uh, Franz, you're not the only one to be blamed for not being able to study so well. He told him that your parents are to be blamed equally enough. And he also took some of the blame to himself. He said, even I'm supposed to be blamed. So, let's continue. Then, from one thing to another, M. Hamel went on to talk of the French language. Now, as I told you what the situation exactly is, on not answering the dreaded rule of participles properly, in fact, not answering at all. Now, Hamel, one by one, is uh, talking about the people who are to be blamed for this condition of not just France, but the condition of all the students, pretty much everybody who just keeps on delaying and postponing the learning and does not learn properly. So, from one thing to another, M. Hamel went on to talk of the French language. So, first he's talking about who all are supposed to be blamed for this condition of lack of knowledge of the students. And then, finally, he's also talking about the French language. If you remember, today is supposed to be their last French lesson, right? So, there are lots of emotions in there. Now, M. Hamel went on to talk of the French language, saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world. Of course, he's a French teacher and he's a Frenchman and he's all praises for the French language. Moreover, because today is the last French lesson. So, saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world, the clearest, the most logical that we must guard it among us and never forget it. Now, first of all, he starts with saying that French language is a very beautiful language. It is, in fact, the most beautiful language in the world, the clearest, the language that has a lot of logic in it, so the language that makes a lot of sense. And then he also says that we, we means uh, over here, everybody who's present in his class, but in a larger sense, everybody, all the people, all the Frenchmen living in the district of Alsace and Lorraine. So, we all must guard it amongst us and never forget it. Guard it amongst us means keep it within us. 
how would one possibly guard a language? Now, language is not something like a gold or diamond that you'll keep it in the locker or you keep it in some cupboard and guard it and protect it. Language is a means of communication. So, the meaning over here to guard language is the only possible way with which you can actually guard a language is by keep on using it. Keep on using it. Keep on repeating it. Keep on conversing in that language with one another. So, the, the language is beautiful. It is very logical. It is very clear and we all must guard it. We should keep it among us and never forget it. See, now you already know the setting. The setting is that today or in fact that particular day that we are talking about. So today is going to be their last French lesson. And from tomorrow onwards, a new teacher would be coming to teach in the school in the district of Alsace and Lorraine. And the language that the new teacher would be teaching would be German. So there would be a lot of German influence. The uh, Prussians, uh, you know, this is a plot or this is a scheme uh, done by the Prussians on the Frenchmen such that they gradually forget the French language. They start using German and they gradually forget the language. So this is what Hamel is hinting on in these lines that we must guard it. We must protect it. That means despite the fact that from tomorrow I will not be there with you. I means M. Hamel will, will not be there with you. You uh, might not be learning. You in fact will not be learning French anymore from tomorrow. But you all people must be wise, must be intelligent to know this thing that don't forget the French language. The Prussians exactly want this. They want you to forget the language. They want you to stop using the language. Don't do that. This is what Amel is trying to tell. So that we must guard it among us and never forget it. These lines are again very, very important. They are very important lines. They make uh, they make a very important question. So you need to remember this part really well. So uh, amongst us and never forget it because when a person are, when a prison are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to their language, it is as if they had the key to their prison. Now, what they're trying to say over here is, no, it's because when a person, please correct that, it's not prison. Because when a person are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to their language, it is as if they had the key to their prison. So, what Hamel is trying to tell them is, in a situation, you know, when a part or a district or a country or a nation is enslaved, like in this case, uh, Alsace and Lorraine districts of French are enslaved by Prussians, right? So whenever this situation occurs, Hamel is saying, whenever this situation occurs, that when people of a country or a country or a region, they are enslaved. So as long as they hold fast to their language, hold fast to the language means as long as they keep on using that language amongst themselves, it is as if they have that key to their prison. They can just use that key to uh, leave that place when it is required. So what Hamel wants to tell to everybody is he wants to tell the class to guard their language, to keep on using it. As being close to one's language is the key to escape from the prison of slavery, right? So what he's trying to uh, say over here is that the utility of that language, to keep that language alive amongst you, would actually be that key to the prison, which will actually help you leave the prison of slavery. Slavery by Prussians, slavery by Germans. Language will keep them united and help them from getting free from Germans. If people know their mother tongue, well, no one will be able to enslave them. 
so these lines are very very important lines of the chapter in fact most frequently asked lines uh, you know they'll be giving you this extract they might be asking you questions they might be giving you options giving this extract so you will have to explain these words so this line is very important that when a person are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their language it is as if they have the key to their prison that means they must keep on using that language they must keep on pronouncing talking in that language and that language will keep them united and eventually help them from getting free from germans right we'll move ahead then he opened a grammar then he opened a grammar means uh, now uh, he starts another thing another concept so now the entire class is studying grammar this concept is like a little uh, you know uh, a concept where junior students are there so uh, one teacher is there and he keeps on changing the subjects right so he keeps on changing the subject so he keeps on changing the topic so he opened a grammar and read us our lesson i don't know if you have observed this or not i um, i strongly believe that you are listening to the chapter very carefully and you must have observed this by now that hamel must be facing so much of mental trauma right still despite all that despite all that trauma despite all that heartbreak that from tomorrow you know he would have to leave that place where he he had spent last 40 years of his life and uh, at the place at the school where he put in so much of hard work still you know today is his last lesson and he wants to give it properly he's trying to uh, he's so heartbroken towards the end also you will see that hamel chokes he is so heartbroken that he is not able to speak his lines properly he is so full of emotion right but still you know he is doing his things so well he is doing the schedule he is managing the schedule properly he is taking all his classes he is giving so much knowledge to the kids right so then he opened a grammar and read us our lesson i was amazed to see how well i understood it i means franz so franz was really amazed and surprised to see that this time unlike all the previous times and like all the past incidents this time he understood it so well all he said seemed so easy so easy so he's telling that whatever hamel explained today seemed so easy in fact it was so easy do you really think it was easy nothing like that he was a uh, you know he was more serious now and he was feeling bad that today is going to be their last french lesson rather the entire class was feeling the same thing so they were concentrating better like you know if tomorrow is your exam so you will concentrate and study better right something like that so all he said seemed so easy so easy i think too that i had never listened so carefully so one uh, you know one reason for uh, understanding the lesson uh, clearly is that uh, franz is telling that i had never listened so carefully right and that he had never explained everything with so much patience and second reason he is uh, attributing the second reason to m hamel Uh, that uh, you know today i am understanding everything so clearly foremost because i am concentrating better i am listening to the lecture very carefully and that he had never explained everything with so much patience and second reason he is giving that m hamel also had never explained everything with so much patience so of course that would also have been the case that this time you know hamel also knowing that today is going to be my last french class my last lesson so i would give my 100% in fact if possible more than 100% to this lesson so he had never explained everything with so much patience it seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away here poor does not mean a uh, poor like a beggar here poor means sad you know so bad such bad things are happening with him that ways so as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our heads at 
one stroke right so uh, he is telling that it seemed as if today Ham hamel wanted to give all he knew before going away you know whatever knowledge he had he just wanted to give it actually he wanted to put it all in the heads of the students in one stroke right so we'll go ahead it's quite simple right next one after the grammar so the grammar lesson is over now let's see what happens we had a lesson in writing so now was the writing task or the writing class that day m hamel had new copies for us so hamel had brought new notebooks for the class written in a beautiful round hand now on those copies a uh, hamel had written in a very beautiful handwriting on each of the copy what he had written france alsace france alsace they looked like little flags floating everywhere in the school room hung from the rod at the top of our desk now this is not you know sometimes a uh, author uses words which do not literally mean lines which do not literally mean the same now here hanging on the rod at the top of the desks doesn't literally mean that the notebooks were placed at some rod nothing like that what basically he means to tell us over here is that those notebooks uh, which hamel had brought for the students for the kids in the classroom on them he had written in a very beautiful round cursive kind of a manner franz alsace franz alsace and these books since they were you know uh, spread uh, in the entire class probably distributed to the entire class so there was a big uh, good uh, lengthy spread of the, the these books all over so they uh, seemed to be something like flags floating everywhere in the school room right they were not actually flags but they gave this impression of you know alsace lorraine alsace france so flags floating everywhere in the class now see you ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how quiet it was what do you mean by ought to ought to basically means it's your duty to over here how we can interpret it is you ought to have seen means you must have seen you should have seen how everyone set to work means how all the students everyone present in the classroom set to work means everyone was doing their work the written work given by hamel so properly so well and how quiet it was there was pin drop silence in the class the only sound was the scratching of the pens over the paper so when you you know uh, the pen uh, scratches on the paper and when there's pin drop silence this actually this line adds to the fact that the students were concentrating so well doing the work so well there was pin drop silence in the class and the only sound that was heard was pen scratching on the paper once some beetles flew in beetles you can see these insects right so once some beetles flew in so while the class was in progress while the class was going on some beetles flew in but nobody paid any attention to them so franz is saying you know it's very shocking it's very surprising that how is this a possibility with a class full of so many naughty kids little little kids kids of all ages and beetles flew in the class some beetles flew in and nobody is even paying heed to them nobody is even looking up from their work everybody is proceeding with their work it usually does not happen you know i still remember like right now only i remember this thing and i would not stop myself from telling it to you you know once in our classroom one bat flew in really this happened and everybody including myself and you know everybody got so scared of that bat so you can pretty much imagine and we were just running here and there some kids were jumping over the benches somebody was switching off the light somebody was putting on the light so it was a whole ruckus in the class so you can imagine generally uh, in all normal cases that would have been the case but today all the kids were focusing so much that those beetles flew in but nobody gave any attention to them not even the littlest ones who worked right on tracing their fish hooks 
as if that was French too. Now the littlest ones over here refers to, see there were some pigeons that were there on the roof. So those are the littlest ones the author is talking about over here. So even the little pigeons who were busy uh, scratching the roof with their claws. Uh, they, they've told na, um, the fish, they've told scratching out the pens. Once some beetles flew in but nobody paid any attention to them. Not even the littlest ones who worked right on tracing their fish hooks. So the littlest ones means the pigeons worked right on tracing their fish hooks means they were busy scratching the roof with their claws. The pigeons were there on the roof and they were uh, busy scratching it with the with their claws. That is the reference of fish hooks over here. Okay. And it seemed that even they were doing the writing tasks that Hamel had given them of French language. So that is why he's saying who worked right on tracing their fish hooks as if that was French too. On the roof, the pigeons cooed very low. Cooing is the sound that the pigeons make. So, on the roof, the pigeons also cooed very low. In a very low voice, they cooed. Why? Because they were, even they were feeling sad. And I thought to myself, Franz is thinking, will they make them sing in German? Even the pigeons, now very beautifully put in words over here. So, Franz is thinking that, okay, these Prussians, they are now empowering us and they are changing our language and they are stopping our French lessons and they are literally forcing German language upon us. That's okay. They are doing it to us, the humans. But would they be doing the same to the pigeons? Would they make even the pigeons speak in German? You know, this is what they are. This is what is the implication over here. Now, um, see, I would like to tell you something over here. Language, you know, mother tongue or language comes very naturally to each and every person, right? And it's practically not possible to take out that language away from him or her, right? For example, I don't know if you ever, uh, you've ever wondered this thing or not, but just do think about it as I'm talking about it. You know, uh, sometimes if we are arguing or fighting with someone, you must have noticed most of the people when they are arguing or fighting, they basically and mostly fight in their mother tongue. You know, otherwise, even if, you know, they are uh, trying to show to the world that, no, I talk this language, I speak in this language. But when it comes to fighting or arguing with someone, you know, that emotion of intelligence does not work over there. That equation doesn't work. So gradually you start blabbering and talking in your own mother tongue or perhaps the language which you are very, very comfortable in, right? Uh, in my case, you know, even if I'm talking usually in Hindi, uh, because in our houses we usually talk in Hindi, right? So if I happen to argue with someone, with some friend or some relative, automatically it will shift to English. I don't know how it happens. But automatically, whenever I'm fi uh, fighting or arguing with somebody, the language, the word, the English words would start coming to me. I don't know why, but this happens. So, um, English is not my mother tongue. My mother tongue is Hindi. But usually, you know, uh, we, uh, we since I use it more often, so this is what happens with me. You would also notice the same thing. So, why I quoted this example over here was to tell you that it's very difficult to remove someone's language from himself or herself. See, if, uh, if for example, your mother tongue is Punjabi and I tell you, no, no, from tomorrow you have to talk in Hindi. You can't talk in Punjabi. It will be uncomfortable. You would not like to do that. And why? Why to do that? So just imagine the plight of these people, right? So uh, the what the author is trying to tell you over here is that language comes very naturally to every person it is not possible to take it away from any person right and just like you cannot take cooing away from pigeons you know pigeons would coo only pigeons would not sing so just like you cannot take away cooing sound from the pigeons similarly how can you take out French from Frenchmen? Again, very important lines, very beautiful lines. And I hope I have made you understand that concept quite well. Okay. Whenever I looked up from my writing, 
I saw M. Hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing, then at another, as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room. Now the uh, class is still going on. And whenever Franz says, I looked up from my writing, I looked up from my writing means uh, he's writing something and in between he's looking up. So whenever he used to look up, you know, I saw M. Hamel sitting motionless in his chair. He used to see M. Hamel sitting there and motionless without any movement, sitting in his chair and gazing first at one thing, then at another. Uh, you know, this shows you an image of something like this, that he's so heartbroken. Hamel is so, uh, you know, feeling so hurt right now. And, you know, 40 years he had been in the same place, served in the same school, uh, taught in the same <clears throat> school class. So he's looking at everything and it's like he's having a final gaze or a final gaze. You understand his look? Final gaze or final look at everything. Then at another, as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room. Okay. Fancy. For 40 years, he had been there in the same place. So Franz is saying, oh, what a thing this is. Just imagine for good 40 years, he had been in the same place with his garden outside the window. You know, same garden and his class in front of him. Just like that. Only the only difference was what only the desks and benches had been worn smooth. Worn smooth be, means basically worn out of use. You know, if you're using benches for 40 years, so there will be some sign of warning out, right? So some sign of warning off. So the benches had been worn smooth. The walnut trees in the garden were taller. Of course, they were taller now. And the hope vine, hope vine is basically a climber. Hope vine that he had planted himself twined about the windows to the roof. So hope vine of course is a climber. So it twined about and it grew higher, right? So it reached the roof. How it must have broken his heart to leave it all, you know, to leave all these things with which he was associated for good 40 years of his life. Poor man. To hear his sister moving about in the room above, packing the trunks. You understand, not trunks, uh, the iron uh, suitcases. I've also not exactly seen them, but yes, I've seen them on YouTube. You must have seen in old movies, maybe uh, iron suitcases or iron trunks where they used to, you know, when they probably at that time, they would not be having such good luggages, bags, so uh, iron suitcases in which they used to stock their stuff. Yes, I've seen those suitcases in some movies. I think you would have also seen them, right? So packing their trunks for they must leave the country next day, as we all know. I think it's quite simple and well understood. Okay. But he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last. See, this is what I was telling you. He was performing his duties so well. So if somebody asks you, if a question comes, of course, we'll be having another uh, you know, lecture, another video for the important questions, which would be the last and final video of this chapter. But yes, if somebody asks you to sketch a character, sketch a uh, character of M. Hamill, how he was as a person. So here in these lines, you would be able to notice how hardworking, how serious he was towards his profession. So, but he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last after the writing, we had a lesson in history. So now comes another lesson. And then the babies chanted their ba, baby, bo, bu. Uh, now these basically are phonetics. Phonetics, you understand the sounds of the alphabet. This is how um, they teach the little kids, you know. Even today they teach phonetics. The sound, a, a, ba, be, something like that. So the babies means the little ones chanted these alphabets. Down there at the back of the room, old hostel, you remember old hostel with spectacles and the primer? Yes, old hostel had put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands, primer, that book of uh, basics, right, of any language. So, book of basics. So, he had put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands, he spelled the letters with them. So, now the old hostel, hostel is the name of that person, is repeating those alphabets with the little kids. Ba, be, be, bo, bu. So he's repeating them. So you could see that he too was crying. Of course, everybody was crying. Everybody was emotional. So Husser was also crying. His voice trembled with emotion. Now, Husser is old. 
So his voice is trembling and he's emotional also at this point of time. So you could imagine, uh, you know, an old man with a trembling voice uh, speaking up like alphabets, basic alphabets like babies. It would be a, a confusion of laughter and sadness. So that is what perhaps the scene was. Why laughter? Because to other students, it would appear to be very funny, you know, an old man speaking alphabets, doing phonetics and his voice trembling. So it's actually a very emotional kind of a scene over here. You could see that he too was crying. His voice trembled with emotion. And it was so funny to hear him that we all wanted to laugh and cry. So the, it was funny. You understood why it was funny. As I told you, an old man doing these things, trying to learn and recite phonetics and his voice trembling at the same time. So it was laughter and crying kind of scene at the same time. Ah, how well I remember it. The last lesson. So Franz is repeating it. Let's see how well I remember it. My last lesson. Okay. All at once, the church clock struck 12. So the church clock, it gave, uh, it struck 12. Then the Angelus. Angelus is the church prayer. Okay. At the same moment, the trumpets of the Prussians returning from the drill sounded under our uh, window. So uh, at the same time, you know, the church uh, clock uh, struck 12, then the church prayer was there and the uh, say at the same time they could hear the trumpets. I've already given you an image of trumpets, the um, the instrument, right? That they're playing the instrument or the that they're playing during the drill, right? The Prussian soldiers. So same moment that trumpets of the Prussian returning from the drill, returning from their drill, returning from their movement, their exercise, their rehearsal, uh, playing the trumpet sounded under our window. So there was a lot of different sounds that were, were there, you know, church, clock striking, then the angelus, that is the prayer, and then the sound of the trumpets. M. Hamill stood up, very pale in his chair. Stood up means he just stood up from his chair. Very pale, you know, um, he is now realizing that, okay, the time is getting over in this school now. So that is why pale, that is why dull and colorless, you know, all ruddiness gone, all happiness gone, okay. And I never saw him look so tall, you know, sometimes the narrators, the, the authors, they put in such beautiful words in the chapter. I never saw him look so tall, of course. Uh, there was nothing happened that physically Hamill would have grown tall at this age and on this day. Nothing like that here. The imagery of tall or tallness is used out of respect. Uh, out of respect that Franz and the entire class now felt for Hamill. That out of respect, he looked, he rose in stature. He looked higher. He looked taller out of respect. He never grew physically taller. That's not practically possible. It's not some kind of a joke going on over here. So, in short, Hamill's face became dull and colorless as the time had come for the class to get over. Hamill looked tall out of respect. Had been teaching for 40 years, yet had to leave. Despite so much of good and hard work, Hamill had to leave. So, everybody was really full of respect for M. Hamill. Karo to life mein aisa kaam karo, hai na? Right. These are the last and the best, most touching lines of the chapter. My friend said he, he means Hamill, I, I. But something choked him. He could not go on. Now Hamill is trying to speak up his last words. Uh, last words means last words in this school. Hamill began to speak, but he couldn't. Right? As he was overpowered with emotions. He was choked. Choked means unable to speak up. Right? So he could not go on. So he said, my friends said he, I, I, but something choked him. He could not go on. Then he turned to the blackboard. So he tried to say something, but the emotion choked him. He could not speak any further. So he turned to the blackboard, took a piece of chalk and bearing on with all his might, bearing means accumulating, gathering, might means strength, all the strength he had. Here, physical strength was not required, but a lot of emotional strength was required. For example, if you're choking with emotion and still you have to perform, 
I hope, God forbid, this never happens with you. But if it happens, it's the most difficult thing to carry on, right? And with the dignity, he was carrying the things, hats off to him. So then he turned to the blackboard, took a piece of chalk and bearing means gathering all the courage he had. He wrote as large as he could. Viva la France. That means long live France. Uh, short and sweet, he wrote. Then he stopped and leaned his head against the wall. And without a word, he made a gesture to us with his hand. He still could not speak up. He was choking. He was literally crying inside, full of emotions. It happens. It really happens that you're not able to talk at that point of time. So he just, without speaking a word, he made a gesture. Gesture means an expression he did to the class. You know, something like this. School is dismissed. You may go. These are also very, very important lines of the chapter and with this as i promised you this is gonna be a small lecture so approximately 35 36 minutes may we have finished the second part of the chapter we have read the entire chapter now the most amazing part over here is that since we have done proper ncrt word by word line by line para by para reading of the last lesson nothing is gonna come beyond this is my promise to you everything that is go gonna be coming in your boards is gonna be from here and there will be one more class which i'll be delivering on this chapter that would be on the important questions that would be the final nail uh, that would you know after attending that class you would be really really comfortable that yes this chapter, the last lesson for class 12 is sorted, right? And for those of you who just started with today's lecture, the first part of the chapter, the last lesson, the first part of it, I will just after today's class, uh, add that video to the playlist such that if you want, you can watch that also and you can just gather the connection and do watch the next video also that would also be kind of short because i understand the value of your time right so i will keep it short but i will be covering all the important questions and you don't have to make any effort on this chapter the last lesson anymore after the third video i promise that this chapter would be sorted the question, be it, you know, appear from anywhere, you would definitely be able to attempt it because we are not just doing the summary. In case of summary, if some extract comes, you there might be chances that you would not know. So the entire preparation of that chapter goes waste. So that would never be the case with our classes. Our classes are very well structured. And as I promised to you, after watching my videos, your entire chapter is sorted. And yes, thank you so much students for encouraging me for doing this hard work. And uh, if you like, you can always pass it over to your friends, you know, friends in medical, non-medical or commerce who can also watch these videos. And thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.